Hello. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining us today um, on this webinar hosted by us, Telesoft, um, where we are going to be discussing you know, how to maximize your VCMTS and VCCAP, specifically looking at production scale testing with our newly developed tool called the Triton. Um, I've had a few people join already, so we'll just um, just hang on for a couple more minutes just to uh, let anybody else sort of join and, and kind of settle in. Um, just while we just while we do that, um, we are recording the event today, um, so we'll be sharing that with everybody else at the at the end of the event, and you're free free to uh, to share that with your peers and and colleagues. Um, we are open for questions and, and, and encourage that. Um, and I'm sure any question that anyone's thinking of, um, other people are thinking of as well. So please put that into the into the chat. And the aim there is that we are going to answer all of those questions, um, put that into a document, answer all the questions. And again, we'll send a copy of all the questions and answers out to everybody after the event as well and again we'll um we will anonymize, anonymize everything so um so don't, don't worry about um you know where the questions are and where they're coming from just uh, feel free to ask them and we'll uh, we'll get those back out um and then finally um this is one of our first sort of webinars on in with well, within the cable community so uh me and george are, are very keen on getting some feedback so uh yeah if there is any any things that you see that can be improved or bettered for, for sort of next time uh we'll be again posting a sort of a feedback form at the end so uh that would be great to get your get your kind of feedback so uh that's all the house rules out of the way i um, hope that's given enough time for for people to join um <clears throat> So it's uh, just gone three minutes past the hour. So um, we'll uh, we'll kick off there and uh, and kind of get going. So I guess just to give a, a little bit of background and context to to the webinar. Um, so approximately eighteen months ago, um, Telesoft were contacted um, by a um, large, significant North American operator um, initially to help out with monitoring their newly deployed VCMTS and VCCAP infrastructure. Um, they had experienced a challenge whereby they deployed their systems uh, live into a um, production environment, um, had some challenges with that, um, and were unfortunately had to, to recall um, some of that in, back into their test lab for further um, diagnostics and, and testing. Um, so called us in initially to, to monitor, to try and pinpoint where some of the issues um, around traffic um, were being seen. Um, and then when we were having those discussions in parallel with that, they highlighted a challenge um, with testing um, at, at rate and at scale that is like production production scale testing. Uh, and typically, you know, the way that they do this today is by physically racking and stacking kind of cable modems and, and uh, RPD or RFI devices uh, in their labs, um, but they can't scale to production like scale. And, and this highlighted a number of issues um, that we started to uh, to work with them on. So that's that's a bit of the, the background of this. So during the presentation, we'll be talking you through some of those challenges in more detail, both from a technical perspective uh, and also from a from a business point of view, um, I'll then be introdu introducing the um, the tool uh, and what what that can kind of do. I'll then be handing over to George, um, uh, who is one of our product managers here, uh, who will then be running through through a demo. So I guess you know my name is Gavin. Um, I'm one of the sort of commercial team here at Telesoft. Been working with some of our cable companies uh, historically for sort of over 20 years, but specifically on this this platform for I guess for the last sort of 18 months. And um, George, I guess I'll just hand over to you quickly just for a quick introduction. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Gavin. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining. Yeah, so as, as Gavin mentioned, I'm one of the product managers here at Telesoft. Um, so I help to oversee a number of products, one of which being the Triton test tool for the past 18 months. So yeah, excited to kind of share some of the industry insights that we've picked up over that time, and also to go for a little bit more on the technical side of the tool and its capabilities, and how it can kind of address some of the challenges that we see. Um, I guess just to re-emphasize what Gavin said at the start, if there are any questions throughout the webinar, please do add them 
into the chat and, and we'll address those in a in a mass email kind of post webinar um to you all so yeah thank you and i'll hand back to gavin brilliant thanks george um so yes yeah, so if we if we fire into the to the first sort of um slide um so really this was just really about sort of setting setting the scene um hopefully most of most of you know um most of this um but we thought it was just useful to uh, to sort of go through that um so really this is just sort of highlighting kind of the benefits of a virtualized infrastructure um and and kind of what that kind of brings um so first and foremost it, you know i think it's been well highlighted the cost efficiencies um when deploying kind of a virtualized environment both in terms of kind of capex and opex traditionally and we see that we've seen this many times across you know the whole telco industry whether it's fixed wireline wireless or, or mobile um you know you're moving away from proprietary specialist hardware which is variably you know very expensive to buy in the first instance uh, and because it's proprietary it kind of locks you in so to a sort of a vendor locking which means kind of ongoing operational costs to um, maintain to support to add new features to add new capability is is quite drawn out and, and quite you know quite kind of costly so by moving to virtualize you benefit from you know, commercial off the shelf or cots platforms um you know open source or or you know um open standards uh you know uh virtualized sort of software that is typically used amongst many vendors so it avoids that kind of uh, kind of vendor lock-in secondly we kind of move on to the scalability um so from a from a proprietary sort of legacy standpoint um it's quite rigid it's quite fixed so scaling up um you know without um you know uh, some of those hardware limitations is is quite a challenge so it typically means you know a bit of a forklift you have to bring new infrastructure in that's new power cables that's new air conditioning that's new infrastructure um you know, data data cabling and and a lot of configuration around that to uh to, to enable you to scale up which is which is quite erroneous and, and onerous and uh you know on on the teams um that are that are kind of doing that um so so that's that's a sort of a, a secondary secondary bit um thirdly you know kind of the agility so again you know when you want to add new services virtualized environments are very well designed to, you know, add new services, add new applications very quickly through software upgrades. Again, negating that need for having to deploy specialist hardware for specific applications or services that you typically would have to do. You can now do in software, which has a, you know, clearly, um, in some way, shape, or form, kind of an infinite um, scalability um, kind of factor. Um, then, if we look at uh, resource ut utilization, um, here we're sort of looking at um, you know how the systems can be allocated for for more efficient use um, based upon based upon demand, basically. Um, so, uh, just oh, sorry, I've just lost my lost my thread there uh, a little bit. Um, so, if we move on to uh, performance. Um, Functions can be uh, can be deployed closer to the network, the network edge. Um, so here we're looking at things like the R5 and uh, and things like fiber can be moved closer to the ne network edge. Um, so that that benefits you know our subscribers, our customers um, by by utilizing lower latency, um, a higher performance um, network, and overall um, as as cable operators, it means you can hopefully you know reduce churn. Um, and and enable you know onboarding of uh, of new customers, and from a from a kind of I guess kind of capacity perspective, um, we can kind of do more within less. Um, you know, to the the picture to the right hand side there, um, you know, you typically got you know 192 service groups in hardware, and then the same again in in kind of a virtualized environment, um, and you've got a sort of a 20 to to one kind of ratio of uh, rack space that's been uh, uh, been condensed down. So it's it's clearly clearly very very significant, um, and all of this kind of leads well into let's say the expansion and, and contraction of networks when we see sort of big demands on our networks. You know, it might be might be a sporting event or it might be a big TV event. 
where there's a big draw on the network, a big draw on the um, on the uh, core network. So that ability to to kind of scale up and scale down kind of efficiently is uh, is really what sort of virtualized kind of brings us in, and gives us along with the capex and opex. Move on to the next slide. Um, so hopefully that kind of sets the scene. Um, this sort of slide now is sort of talking around some of the challenges that we've seen with some of our um, some of our cable operators that we're currently working with, and we we've kind of split those roughly into two. One on the left hand side, uh, we call it pilot scale, but these are operators that that tend to have a smaller number of um, physical modems or cable modems and RPD devices within their lab or pre production environments. Uh, on the right hand side, we've got the operators that perhaps have a larger investment or a larger uh, real estate of uh, physical cable modems and RFI devices that are typically sort of 10,000 plus, whereas the pilot scales are sort of less than a thousand kind of cable modems. And what we've seen is that both sides, um, well, both sides of the Venn diagram. Um, kind of have um, you know, challenges. They're slightly different, um, and it's it's these challenges that we've looked to uh, to try and uh, try and resolve with the uh, the Triton uh, Triton BCMTS and BC Cap test tool. Um, so if we look on the left hand side um, at our um, pilot scale, so first and foremost is kind of limited uh, test capability. Um, so really here we're we're, we're talking about this. Is there's a limitation in replicating real network behavior um, and this comes back to our sort of you know use case where we were sort of engaged was that because they were unable to test anywhere near the scale of um, what, what their actual subscribers were um, they weren't able to sort of replicate behavior um, and understand you know what what their um, configurations and what their um, core network was going to to do um, so it kind of limits that um, we then look at sort of the inability to test at, at production scale. Um, so new services you know, may not be validated under stress. Um, so here you're kind of looking at, you know, the, the, the VC cap vendors might have a, a configuration or a, a kind of an optimization of, of what, that, um, what that might look like. Um, but if you're not able to validate that, it's difficult then to to, to sort of um, understand what that um, what that looks like, um, and it's uh, you know um, doesn't give you that kind of confidence to, uh, to to test that production scale. Then, from a kind of a performance matrix perspective, um, it leads to inaccuracy of uh, of what your production environment is going to going to run at and look at. Um, so. One of the things that uh, that our sort of customers are are sort of seeing is uh, you know the, the the testing which they do in their lab or their pre-production environment uh, isn't realistic to what goes into their their production environment, um, and they're they're unable to get sort of to their uh, either their peak or their um, optimized uh, levels of uh, levels of traffic, and then being able to not being able to baseline that. Um, leads to problems later on when you're when you're going live um, which then leads into sort of you know things like risk of incomplete validation so by having a, a lower device count um, can can expose you or increase your risks when dis deploying new services so you might have a um, by only testing a, uh, the service on you know 500 or you know up to a thousand modems, um, but in your real life deployment you may have tens of thousands or maybe hundreds of thousands of, of modems. You're not getting that uh, that same um, validation. So again, um, your VC cap or um, VC MTS is not being sort of test tested under duress to uh, to, to to production like in environments. Um, and then we're looking at kind of under under utilization of, uh, of resources. Um, so again, we we're, we're struggling to see, or our, our cable operators are struggling to see how well 
that kind of scalability and um, utilization of, of their VC cap is going to work because you're only testing a very small subset. You're not able to stretch it um, to its full limitations. So, you know, again, you're having to, the only way to find that out is when you're in your live live environment, uh, which is not the best environment with with real subscribers, with real customers. Um, nobody really wants to be testing in, in that environment. So it's, you know, our, our pilot scale operators really want to test that in their, uh, in their, their pre-test or their, their lab environments. So if we move across to the to the right hand side, um, uh, looking at the challenges of, of sort of our slightly sort of bigger cable operators. So some of those are in you know North America, some of those here in Europe. Um, first and foremost, it's the, the initial outlay. So it's high capex. You know, you have to have to invest into those cable modems. And, and RPDs, and it's not just the physical devices. Um, it's also the um, the infrastructure that goes around that. So it's power supplies, it's racks, it's um, cabling, it's, it's, it's routing, it's all the orchestration that goes around that to sort of um, contribute to, to the management of that. But also, you know, things like air conditioning contribute into there as well. So that's that's very high. Um, then once you've invested significantly, it's keeping that infrastructure running. Um, so the ongoing OPEX, so again, the power, the cooling uh, are, are, are very high. And also by having more and more infrastructure in place, you potentially need more staff to, to run it, maintain it, and, uh, and keep that kind of going. Um, it's very resource intensive. Um, so again, our cable cable community have sort of shared that you know managing and uh, maintaining these these bigger, larger environments, which can which can be physically in different labs in different sites, is is quite quite challenging. So a lot of time spent by the personnel or technical resources in those in those lab uh, environments, you know, doing upgrades, doing configuration changes, um, doing, you know, um, software updates and any patching needs to be applied is, is, is very intensive and time consuming, which then leads into the complexity of the operations. Um, so again, you know, things like um, troubleshooting um, and, and trying to keep the, uh, you know, that alignment with the production network is, uh, is, is, is something that, that consumes a lot, a lot of time. Um, and then things like uh, downtime that we which we've seen as well so if there's a power outage or there's a failure with a um, group or block of cable modems or r5 uh, devices um you know that's that's that has a significant knock-on effect and impact to uh, uh to to the environment and again then bringing those all back up is is, is very challenging when you've got physical modems and, and cable device um sorry, physical modems and physical RPD devices, you know, man manually managing those is, is quite uh, quite a challenge. Whilst there is some automation around this, um, it's fairly limited because I think the the products and platforms that, that, that um, are being deployed are, are relatively stand off the shelf and, and are the same configuration and same spec as what gets, you know, shipped to, uh, to subscribers. So hopefully that gives a bit of a, an overview of some of the some of the challenges hopefully you know well you know maybe some of those resonate so telesoft being the engineering company have, have kind of you know looked at all of this and and we've we've come up with the the triton vc cap vcm ts test tool so it is a carrier scale uh test tool for uh traffic testing and uh emulating or testing uh cable modems and r5 devices in a much smaller platform so the aim of this really is to enhance your test capability so fully load test and limit test and optimize test your chosen vc cap and vcmts of uh, of choice um, we're ensuring or helping you ensure the capability of that infrastructure. So um, making sure that it does do what it's supposed to do and can reach those, those kind of limits. But it also gives you assurance as well of, of what your kind of optimized configuration will be and what the peaks are. So that kind of gives you insight for future planning, for future capacity expansion, um, and, and kind of gives you that, uh, that, that sort of ins uh, insurance. Um, it also is going to help with improved quality of service and kind of quality of customer experience, because hopefully by giving you the scale testing in your lab environments, you're not taking your lab environment and testing it in your production environment and finding the faults there in front of your customers, which I'm sure we'll all agree is, is not the ideal. Um, 
Uh, secondly, oh, well, uh, continuing that thread, um, you know, we're, we're helping to reduce kind of capex and opex because you're not having to spend out on thousands or potentially tens of thousands of modems, or you know, tens of or hundreds of of RFI devices and all that other infrastructure that goes around that. As you can see, it's a three U, three R U kind of platform that significantly reduces your kind of capex. Now, we're not saying you would have to get rid of all of that, but it just means that you can scale up, do more, but keep maybe some of those uh, cable modems and RFI for sort of functional testing. But for that scale testing, we can help you reduce your capex and then. From an OPEX perspective, um, significantly um, reduce your spend on all that kind of power, air conditioning, uh, maintenance, and, and staffing costs that are that are associated with that. Um, there on the right hand side, there's a there's an example of um, some of the cost savings that we've identified. If you had say twenty thousand modems, that approximately costs th- just over six hundred thousand pounds, or about seven hundred and twenty five thousand dollars per year to run in electricity costs alone the equivalent system that that we're offering here brings that down to approximately three thousand pounds or about sort of four four thousand four thousand five hundred dollars in electricity costs a year and that business case alone with with one of the uh, cable operators that we're working with enabled the to pay for the system itself within sort of six to seven months so that's you know kind of significant savings and then it's the ongoing savings after that of, of not needing to spend that much on electricity and power and it's also helping our customers get to market quicker so as i mentioned before this kind of iteration of taking a configuration or a um a network to a live deployment finding some issues with it and having to bring it bring it back into a lab or a pre-production environment slows up your time to market and potentially harms the brand um you see an increase in customer churn um and or you know uh you know uh, your your ability to onboard new customers it becomes more challenging so being able to get that confidence uh to be able to uh, in in the configuration and the, uh, the, the 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 network it's optimized capability means that you can do it hopefully reduce that that cycle and get to market much, much much quicker and then finally there you know um, i think the whole world is is trying to be more environmentally environmentally friendly though it can significantly kind of lower your carbon footprint um with all the things i've been saying you know reduce need for electricity reduce need for electricity for air conditioning uh and uh, physical footprint as well in, in terms of all of that um, so hopefully that gives a bit of a, a flavour into how we sort of address some of those um, challenges from from the business perspective. Um, I guess George, I'll, uh, I'll kind of hand over to you um, to sort of do a bit more of a deeper dive from a technical perspective and uh, and and showcase the demo. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, so I guess to to kind of dive into the into the tool itself. Um, so the Triton test tool is a two-arm test tool, um, and it's specifically been designed to enable organizations to load test, scale test, and ensure the capability of their distributed access architecture. So whether that be VCCAP, VCMTS, hardware CMTS, essentially we want to you know test these systems at rate prior to live deployment so you can find those faults and overcome those challenges um, and ensure quality of service prior to live deployment. Um, It's consistent of two systems, um, so you'll see the architecture on the right there. The top appliance is our Triton device simulator, um, so that's capable of simulating up to 100 virtual remote FI and 20,000 virtual cable modem devices per one new appliance. Um, Now, the devices kind of added into this tool can be configured as near to the physical device specification as possible. Um, So to give a little bit of further context on that, any capabilities that a physical remote fire device would would advertise to the VCMTS can be configured within our tool. So things like vendor, model, software, um, number of upstream and downstream OFDM and SC QAM channels, number of upstream and downstream um, RF ports, the number of PSP flows supported, and kind of so on. So, you know, we essentially mirror the physical device and similarly on the on the modem level as well. And and that kind of creates, I guess, a secondary use case for the tool whereby, you know, users can test and validate different device archetypes and architectures very quickly at scale by kind of creating these custom environments with those loaded in configurable devices. And, you know, all those configurable elements can be taken from, you know, the physical device spec. So whatever it is that you have in your lab currently can be loaded into our tool. 
Um, it's worth noting just at this stage that the device simulator is a scalable appliance. Um, so if you, you know you wanted to go behind beyond 100 RPDs and 20,000 cable modems, you can kind of rack and stack these appliances and they will act as a as a singular unified solution. Um, the, the, the second system down the bottom there is our, is our traffic generator. Um, so that's responsible for generating the upstream consumer or CPE requests and also a downstream stateful response in the form of access services. So off the shelf, um, the 2U system can generate up to 200 gigabits per second of stateful upstream and downstream traffic simultaneously. But that is per Telesoft's proprietary PCIe processing card. So each of these cards can do up to 200 up and 200 down. Um, but we've actually future proofed the system them um, to be able to hold four of these cards. So the 2U system you see on screen there is future-proof to be able to generate actually up to 800 gigabits per second of upstream and downstream simultaneously without the need for additional um, servers. You would only need additional PCIe cards. Um, we manufacture all our own cards and they're kind of, you know, the reason or the, I guess, the capability that allows us to reach these data rates is that because we use um, the latest kind of FPGA technology for any of you that are familiar with that. Um, and because the, the traffic generation and the test scenario is end-to-end -end and is stateful, we can then actually start to monitor the performance of the of that VC cap or VCMTS system in the form of traffic analytics. So things like latency, jitter, packet loss, device connection failures, throughput rates, and kind of so on. So you can really start to measure the quality of service on a I guess on a whole environment level or on a per device group level. Um, in terms of the traffic itself, kind of off the shelf available today is UDP and TCP and downstream traffic generation. But we have also included on our roadmap for 2025 IPTV and VoIP. Um, and just finally, uh, the, you know, we are compliant with the latest versions of Doxus, um, so including 3.1, 3.1 plus, 3.1 low latency, 4.0, um, and and with the relevant kind of privacy support, including including BPI plus. Um, so I'm going to dive into a little bit of a into a demo now. Um, I'll, I'll I'll turn my camera off in a second just so we're not distracting. But again, please, any questions that you do have either throughout the demo or you know based on what you've heard so far, please do pop them in the chat and and we'll address them in in in, in short time so if i just turn my camera off now welcome to this demonstration of the telesoft triton vc cap and vcmts test tool my name is george one of the product managers here at telesoft and today i'll be walking you through some of the comprehensive capabilities that this tool has to offer and addressing how these capabilities can enhance your test environment whilst reducing the time money and resource invested into physical infrastructure during this demo, we'll explore how our solution can simulate complex, large-scale network environments, ranging from remote FI and cable modem simulations to generating high-volume traffic scenarios. Triton allows you to test both the performance of your devices and your network's ability to handle real-world traffic loads, ensuring optimal performance for deployment. We'll cover key functionalities, including device simulation, traffic generation, and detailed performance analysis. And by the end of the demo, I hope that you'll see how the test tool can be an invaluable asset in ensuring the reliability and scalability of your distributed access architecture. The best way to demonstrate the capabilities of our Triton test tool is to walk you through the process of setting up a test environment and executing a test. Today, I'll guide you step by step as we add in virtual devices, configure traffic scenarios, and finally run a live test. This should give you a clear picture of how the tool operates within a live environment. First, we'll start by adding in our virtual devices into the system. The Systems tab is where we define and configure our remote fire and cable modem device archetypes. These archetypes will serve as the building blocks for our test environment. Let's begin by looking at RFI devices pre-configured into the tool, some of which you may recognize. If I navigate into the Vesima device, you will see that this archetype has been configured to mirror and enter a remote fire node more specifically model EN2112. The Triton allows us to configure a wide range of identification and capability parameters that closely mirror those of the physical Vesima device. If I scroll down to the miscellaneous section, you can configure key features such as number of upstream and downstream RF ports, number of upstream and downstream OFDM and SC QAM channels, number of PSP flows, and so on. This level of detail ensures that our virtual devices accurately simulate the behavior of real hardware in the network, 
In summary, any capability which a physical device would advertise to the VCMTS can be configured within the Triton. Similarly, for the modem archetypes, you'll notice the same level of configurability is available. For the purposes of the demo, I've added in a generic DOCSIS 3.1 modem, but you will see that there are a range of parameters available, including DOCSIS version support, privacy support, including BPI+, and various other parameters specific to cable modem functionality. Once our devices are added and configured, we can proceed to set up the overall test environment. Within the Devices tab, we can filter our view to focus on RPDs and cable modems, allowing us to manage and monitor these devices within the test environment. Test environments can be created, stored, and loaded into the Triton to provide ease of use and prevent reconfigurations for each environment change. With the RPD filter on, you can see all of the remote fire devices loaded into my environment down the left-hand side. At this point, none are powered on, but you'll notice that several tabs, including configuration, status, metrics, and logs, which provide in-depth control and monitoring capabilities. As you'll see, you can name these devices and allocate a device archetype based on those configured into the tool. MAC addresses can be manually or automatically allocated. Similarly, we can view and manage the cable modems into groups. Users can build RPD and modem groups to easily organize and navigate their test environment. For today's demo, I've kept it fairly simple with one pre-configured environment. And so now that this is set up, it's time to move on to configuring the test scenario. The scenarios tab is where we define the test scenario that we would like to play. For this demo, I've pre-configured a simple test to demonstrate the tool's core functionality. In this scenario, virtual RPDs and cable modems will initialize, establish a legitimate connection to the principal and auxiliary core before a stateful traffic scenario runs for a set duration and devices are torn down once the test is finished. Tests can be configured to run in loops for extended stress testing. You can also add or modify tasks within a scenario. For example, you could simulate the device reboots or network outages, or you could configure a subset of tasks to repeat continuously over a set period, such as device initialization, connection to the core, teardown, repeat. To control the type of traffic generated during the test, we can link a specific traffic profile under the Profiles tab. Initially, Triton offers UDP and TCP traffic generation. However, IPTV and VoIP generation are also included on our product roadmap for 2025. Users will have the ability to configure throughput rates, packet sizes, and payloads within the tool. Once the test scenario is configured, we can begin the test. As you can see, our virtual devices are now booting up and establishing connections. Within the status tab, you'll start to see the devices connect to the cores, including being allocated an IP address, synchronizing with the PTP server, and so on. If I navigate to the log tab, then this is easier to see. As you can see, the virtual devices are progressing through the connection phases with the core access infrastructure, including initializing, obtaining an IP address from the DHCP server, and synchronizing with the PTP and time of day servers. It's worth noting that IPv4 and IPv6 are both supported. Similarly for the modems, they will flow through all of the legitimate connection phases, including ranging, IP allocation, and so on. If a device fails to establish a connection, then it will be marked as offline in red on the left-hand column. For the purposes of the demo, I purposely simulated a device failure to occur. If we investigate the device logs, we can see that this is a local initialization failure caused within the Triton. I'll reboot the virtual device and you'll see it reconnect shortly. It's worth noting that these failures may occur in real-world testing environments, but they can be easily identified and addressed using the tool's device logs and built-in control plane and data plane PCAP extraction. For a higher level view, we can pivot to the log data for the entire test environment at the bottom of the screen. In the top right corner, we can then filter to fatal logs to identify any connection issues. As you can see, our initialization issue is listed at the top, but beyond this, we can see that a specific remote file failed to obtain an IP address from the DHCP server several times. As the device is online and there are no red lights, we can presume that this device managed to obtain an IP. However, if this was a persistent issue, then users can easily identify the issues which need further investigation. After the test begins, within our home screen, we can track real-time statistics, such as upstream and downstream data rates, a breakdown of downstream data, protocol distribution, a more granular view into our test environment, jitter and latency over time, DOCSIS version breakdown, and alerts, which could include device connection failures, packet loss, 
or user-defined latency and jitter thresholds being breached. These graphs, powered by Grafana, can be customized to fit your specific needs. There are an abundance of data points and metrics which can be fed into these visuals on a total or per device group scale. For the purposes of this demonstration, I've kept the screen fairly basic, and we appreciate that as a lab engineer, you will not want to have to monitor these dashboards throughout the entirety of a test, especially if those tests are running for longer periods or outside of sociable hours. And so the Triton has built-in reporting functionality for a deeper dive into test results. Once each test is concluded, metrics captured throughout will be displayed into a findings report, which can be accessed, stored, and downloaded via the UI. While the current test continues to run, I will pull up a report from a previous test run. Each test report provides key insights into device behavior, traffic flow, and overall performance. At the top of the report lies an end-to-end -end summary of the test which has taken place. We can quickly evaluate the success of this test by analyzing flagged events throughout each stage. For the purposes of the demo, we have purposely implemented a number of events to be raised to showcase the capabilities of the tool. Within the events column, you'll see errors such as RPDs failing to acquire an IP address or failing to synchronize with a PTP server, cable modems failing to complete their ranging or receiving no ping response, and user-defined latency and jitter thresholds being breached. If we keep scrolling down the report, we can see control plane statistics, including device connection rates and RCP throughputs, data plane statistics, including a breakdown of OFDM and SCQAM by bits per second and packet count, including any discarded packets, CPE connection rates, traffic throughputs, and jitter and latency statistics over time. As you will see within the table, latency averaged at 21 milliseconds, but peaked at 191 milliseconds. If we come down to our log summary at the bottom of the report, we can gain a more granular view of notable events raised during the test. When investigating the 191 millisecond latency peak further within our logs, we can identify the exact device and exact time that this occurred, as well as a description as to why this may have occurred to enable further investigation. Finally, for users looking to automate their testing processes or integrate the tool into existing workflows, Triton provides a fully functional RESTful API. Within the tool, there is a built-in API browser which allows you to configure and operate the system via API calls. For example, by running the get model command, we can retrieve a system overview. You'll find a range of commands available, enabling customized and remote management. So this concludes our demonstration of the Telesoft Triton VCCAP and VCMTS test tool. I hope this has given you a comprehensive look into how the tool can simulate complex network environments, orchestrate production scale testing scenarios, and provide detailed performance insights, all within a low footprint scalable solution. Thank you for listening. Brilliant. <clears throat> thank you, everyone. Um, so, yeah, I just want to we're concluding now. So um, thank you, everyone who has joined us today on this webinar. Just a reminder, um, everything has been recorded. So we will be publishing and sending that out to everybody um, after the event. Uh, I've seen that there's been some questions that have come in. So thank you very much for sending those in to us. Um, our contact details are there on the screen. If you do think of any other questions afterwards, please do drop either George or myself uh, an email. Uh, we're both on LinkedIn as well. Um, and finally, I think yeah, we are we are um, looking at, at uh, feedback. We're always keen to understand how we can uh, better ourselves. So if there was things that you liked or didn't like, uh, or anything else that. Um, uh, you'd like to see in sort of webinars like this uh, from Telesoft going forwards. Uh, there will be a form and, and a you know, small incentive for, as, a, as a thank you gesture for, for doing that. So uh, we'd certainly appreciate the feedback. Um, so unless there's anything else, George, is that, that's everything covered. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was just, uh, yeah, I think just as a kind of reminder from, from what Gavin said at the start of the call. So, you know, we're going to collate all of the questions that we've received in the chat together and, and, and document those and then release that out in a kind of mass email, mass email to everyone. They will be anonymized, um, but everyone will receive the answers to the, to the questions posted um, within the next day or so. So, yeah, we, we look forward to hopefully speaking to some of you again. Um, and, and yeah, thank you very much for, for your time uh, out of your afternoon or morning, depending on where you are. OK, thank you very much, everyone. And um, there's more questions coming in. This is really great. Thank you very much. We'll, we'll follow up with all of those, document those all up and get those sent back out. So we'll uh, 
well, thank you again for your time and uh, wish you all a very good uh, remainder of your day. We'll end the call there. Thank you. Bye-bye.